The ability to look into the living human body has been a dream of scientists and doctors for centuries. For 20 years, computer tomography delivers high-quality cross-sectional images, but they do not reflect the three-dimensional reality. We must imagine the third dimension from a sequence of images like those of the head you see here. However, modern techniques allow direct generation of perspective views from a stack of images. The Institute of Mathematics and Computer Science in Medicine of the University of Hamburg has developed such techniques to extract pictures from a stack of cross-sectional images since 1984. The primary goal was to support radiological diagnostics. This is a reconstruction of an abdominal section generated from spiral computer tomography. The patient had a lesion on the right kidney. It turned out that the diagnosis of this lesion is also easily possible from the native tomograms. So it was one of the early experiences that the value of 3D visualization is more in the subsequent step of surgical treatment, like in craniofacial surgery, which was the first discipline to make practical use of the novel techniques. This is a highly detailed animation generated in 1987 from a patient after surgery of turricephaly. All details, like sutures and drill holes, correspond to reality. Not only the inspection of inner organs, but also their function was simulated, such as the motion of this jawbone. While surgery of congenital malformations is not time critical, imaging for trauma surgery must be quick. For this tibial fracture, the surgeon certainly does not need a 3D view in advance, although it looks quite nice. However, in this case of a complex acetabular fracture, a 3D reconstruction could be decisive for a proper operation. In 1991, the first realistic reconstructions of vascular anatomy from magnetic resonance angiograms were generated. Their usefulness for planning an access path in neurosurgery is apparent. However, in the 80s, despite the realism of these pictures, it was hard to establish such techniques in the clinic. The IMDM put its emphasis, therefore, on applications for teaching anatomy and radiology. As these sequences from 1986 show, 3D models are an ideal tool for this purpose. In this case, the cross-sectional images could be viewed at their anatomical location. The next scene, generated in 1987, shows the first brain ever reconstructed from a living person. It was a patient with a brain tumour whose brain could be inspected by rotation and cutting. The quality of the brain surface was poor as compared to today's techniques. Three years later, brain surfaces looked much better. Even more sophisticated visualization was possible by simulating multiple light sources which cast shadows on the walls. Computerized body models are especially useful in pediatrics, particularly for understanding ultrasound imaging. 
This is a model of a 30 weeks old stillborn fetus acquired with MRI. Oblique cross sections like those acquired with ultrasound can be shown within the three-dimensional anatomy. The most exciting challenge is, of course, the in vivo visualization of the heart. It is rather easy to reconstruct an excised heart, as you can see here. In 1988, a beating heart was reconstructed from 12 heart phases, each having 28 cross-sections. They were acquired synchronously with the ECG. Different rendering methods were investigated. Here, surface rendering was chosen. Unfortunately, not much detail was visible. However, by cutting, the four-chamber view could be displayed. A lateral view at the lower left corner shows the position of the cut plane. This heart was the first one ever reconstructed from a living person. Volume rendering gave these results. The beating heart, pulmonary vessels, and a diaphragm could be inspected from all directions. A combined mode volume rendering for the rendering for the heart and surface rendering for the exterior seemed to be the best. Changing transparency made hepatic vessels visible. Coronary vessels were not present in these data. It was in 1989 that a 2,300-year-old mummy was scanned with computer tomography. The head was reconstructed from 234 CT slices. It was no problem to reconstruct the skull. The quality of rendering is still comparable with what can be achieved today. We see the remains of the liquid which had been used for the mummification in pink. The blue object is a piece of wood which was used to fix the head. The head had apparently been removed before the mummification procedure. This view to the skull base concludes the short movie about the work of the Institute of Mathematics and Computer Science in Medicine in the years from 1986 to 1991. For more information, pictures or movies, please consult this World Wide Web homepage.